All right, so uh, before we actually get to the legs, I'm just going to quickly talk about the sword sheath. So here's the original samurai, and you'll notice that with the crease pattern, the sheath is in the hand of the samurai. Now, that would be okay if you wanted the samurai to actually hold the sheath. However, uh, my intention was for it to be something like this, where it's attached to the hip, like so. And in this case, you can notice for this samurai, it's shifted past the arm. And so if you're wondering how to do that, it's quite simple. Uh, let me put this guy over here. Um, instead of using a two by two square, you're going to use a three by three. So if you, uh, what that means is if you look at the crease pattern, um, which I'll try to undo it without undoing the arm, the starting point on this side, which is the thick side, is the same. However, you're just going to stretch one more unit um, taller and wider, I guess, to make it a three. Normally it would end here for that two by two, but you just extend it and you get the unit shifted down. Um, so it's a really simple change, really, really simple change, but it adds a little bit of detail. Um, so that's pretty much it for that change. Um, now we're going to go over to the legs. All right, so before we go to the legs, let's take a quick look at the original legs. So here they are. Uh, this is the one shown in the tutorial. And then here's the new legs, which is for the new samurai. And personally, I think this has a much better structure. It looks much more like armor. There's real structures going on here. And it is thicker um, so that when you turn the model to the side, you'll notice there's actual depth to the legs versus these. There's not much, it's very thin. Um, and so I think this is a more realistic approach. Um, so if you want to try this, that's what we're going to cover next. All right, so what we have here is the same structure as from the tutorial, which briefly you just have one flap that's normally here uh, folded over. And just like the tutorial, we're going to be spread squashing these flaps across. Except this time we're actually just going to spread squash. So one, two, three, we're going to go up four. So four spread squashes all the way up. And that's what's going to give us our detail. And now you're going to want to make sure to spread squash these really cleanly as that's going to add to the cleanliness of the armor because we're going to be using this, the texture from these spread squashes for um, different details. So go ahead and spread squash these. I'm just gonna time lapse through just four and we'll be right back. All right, so you see we have on this leg the four spread squashes. And from doing so, you'll notice I also had to just valley fold a little bit over here just to swivel it so that I can kind of lay flat. Um, you don't want the side to stick out too, too much as we want it to be more in for the shaping. Uh, but for now, it can stick out a little bit like this. Now the details not just made by these spread squashes. The little trick here is when you spread squash, you leave this part sunken in we are going to unsync this little point. And I know unsyncs are a little scary, but you're gonna to wanna to be careful um, while doing it, but it's not too hard. So all the creases exist, and all you really have to do is pull, and then gently reverse the creases that you can see. Um, you're not probably not gonna be able to see it on screen, but on your model, they're just the existing creases. And then fold down like this. And when you fold up, that's what gives us our little diamond shape, just like that. And that is very helpful for some nice looking details. So you're going to go ahead and do that on all four of these. And I'm going to show just one more. And again, it's not too difficult. Uh, might depend a little bit on the paper using, 
I imagine single tissue, this might be a little bit difficult, but double tissue or the Unreal paper I'm using, it's not too bad. You just got to be careful. Um, as you can see, my paper got a little bit stuck right here. So you're just going to want to be careful before you press anything down. And if it is stuck, stuck like this, you can always go underneath the paper, fix up the crease, and then you're good to go. So I'll show that really quickly here. This is like the worst case scenario you can get into one of those, but there you go, I fixed the crease, and now you can just push it down like that. And when you valley fold up, you get your diamond. Um, so go ahead and do those for these as well. And do it on this side, uh, the other leg, and we'll get back to the actual shaping. All right, so we have completed the spread squash and unsinks on the other leg. Now we're going to get into some of the details to form, I guess, the knee pads, the knee joint slash shin guards. And so I'm going to be referencing how many of these diamonds there are for the placement. So basically you can think of this first diamond. This is going to be our foot. The second diamond is going to be our shin guard. The third is going to be our knee and the rest is our thigh. Now you don't want to make the legs too short. So just keep that in mind when you're shaping. Uh, first thing we're going to do is for the feet, we are actually going to valley fold the point of the very first diamond down. And this is so it, when we make the foot, it kind of covers the foot, uh, kind of like, I don't know how a guard would. It's a kind of a small detail and you're not really going to see it. Um, if you look at this, it's very much tucked inside. Uh, but that's, that's just that. Um, next, we're going to leave this second diamond in place because this is going to be our shin guard. And the third one is going to be our knee pleat. And what you want to do here is you're going to do a really small pleat. And the references are, you can see a grid unit here in a grid unit right where this hinges for the diamond. You're going to want to fold a little bit below the half, if not at the half as a mountain. And then you're going to pleat very slightly back down just like that. So I'll show that a little bit closer. About halfway. And then the pleat just like that mountain valley very simple and what you can see is that now this top point of the diamond will form the top ridge of our shin guard and this unit right here will be our knee pleat however we're not done we're actually going to treat both sides as a pleat so once we have that folded we're going to flip it around and you'll notice we have this whole flap kind of like this and so we're going to want the same orientation for this knee pleat. And what that does, it evens out the layering just a bit. And it makes the shaping a little bit cleaner when we go to fit in the details. So it's very simple. It should kind of naturally just invert just like that. And it makes it a lot cleaner. And you'll see kind of what we do for the shaping in a bit and why that helps. So obviously everything we do on this leg, we're going to do the, on the other leg, um, the feet, it's pretty simple. Um, uh, but you can start off with a similar pleat and this pleat is going to happen right about halfway or a little bit higher right on that unit where the hinge is for the diamond, just like that. And I'm going to valley fold a little bit below. And these are kind of just pre-creases for me. So there's going to be a mountain here, a valley here. And using those two creases, I am going to make a round, I'm going to connect it with an arc. So if you look here, just imagine there's an arc. And what that's going to look like, something like this. Now this is very much not really a fold. This is definitely a, 
a shaping step, and that is to get the foot angled, um, which, it, which is why it's three-dimensional. But from here, we can start to make our entire leg a little bit three-dimensional. So even if I just fold in half of the leg in front of the unit, you can see it's starting to bend. And what I like to do is once I have my foot in a position that I like, I will take the corners a little bit and just fold them in. So there's not really a reference for this, but it's about a third of a unit if you want to think about it like that. Just like this. And again, this is very much shaping to your decision to what you think is the correct proportion for your foot depending on how you folded this model. And so for starters, it's going to be like this. Let's try to show it at a couple different angles. Just like that. Now before we continue, I'm going to show the other one so you can kind of see the final shaping details. Again, you're going to want to spend quite a bit of time on this. You'll notice the foot is very rounded. So if I show the bottom, it's very rounded. Um, basically, I use the flaps towards the front or just a bit of paper. And I pinch down and I just shape it um, so that it covers up the toe. Um, I'm not going to show that here because that's just a lot of tweaking and making it look round and nice. But what I am going to show you is just a little bit of thought process for the shin guards and that's automatically going to help shape your leg out. So if we take a look here, our diamond naturally has these edges that come up. We're going to use these as our base reference and these flaps that are next to it, I'm just going to kind of fold behind, not with a hard crease, just with a soft crease. And it's going to line up with what we did our feet with. So just around here. And then before we go all the way up, um, you're, again, you're just kind of eyeballing this. You're going to want to imagine a line connecting from about here to a little bit near the knee pad. And it's going to be at an angle kind of like this. So our first angle was here. Our next angle bends in a little bit. So about here. And this is for your knee. And I pinch it a little bit to kind of start the shape. And that way I can match it on the other side. Just like this. Again, not, not super hard creases. And when you put that together, you can start to see our shin guard taking shape. Just like that. So you get this shin guard kind of shape. If I hold it like this. And you can adjust this as you please. Um, now, with that, we are going to continue that crease we made a little bit higher up and into the thigh. Now the thing about thighs, if you go ahead and take a look at thigh armor, or real samurai armor with the thigh, um, thighs are quite rounded and uh, most of the time they're going to be thicker than a calf. That's just anatomy. You can look at your own thigh for that. So use that kind of as reference. Try to see where and how the muscles line up to then shape this accordingly. But very simply, you can just round out from here the thigh. Um, and as long as it's rounded and a bit wider than your calf, you're pretty much good to go. And again, this just takes a little bit of fidgeting to go with. Um, but the important part is that you have your shin guard in place. And as it goes up, it crosses through the knee pad a little bit and that allows you to round out your thigh so if you look at my knee pad i'm still folding in a little bit i'm not folding to the outside too quickly 
I'm allowing it to be thinner than the thigh. And from here, depending on what pose you want your leg to be in. Uh, so in this case, this is a very static pose. He's just standing up. I don't have to do anything. If you want him to be kneeling, then you would use your existing paper to change the uh, angle of the knee joint, similar to what we did with the foot. Um, and vice versa, and you just can play around with it from here. And once you have it all shaped and ready to go, you can finalize your creases, spend a lot of time, I guess, massaging the paper into proper form, and then finishing up by closing up the toes. And you can do some locks um, to lock those in place. And what helps is if your paper is way too thin and you can't hold this shape, you can use wire just running down the middle. And that will just give the model some strength, some durability. Um, that way, over time, it doesn't just fall apart on you very easily. Um, so don't be afraid to use that just to make the model look nice and to last longer. Um, but that is going to wrap up the changes to the Samurai. And that will complete our kind of DLC shaping tutorial. So I hope that helps. Just a quick review. We did the legs, we did the sword sheath, and of course we did the mask and the helmet. And as you can see, even though we folded the structure, there's a lot of shaping to go to go from here to here. So definitely spend a lot of time, work your techniques, use your eyes, um, look up photos of samurai, and really turn your samurai into the piece that you want it to look like. Yeah, that's it from me. Let me know if you have more questions. Thank you guys so much for following along with the Samurais. Uh, the Samurais have they're quite the journey and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it gives you some insight on how to use shaping to make one model look nearly completely different than another just by shaping. But yeah, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, helps out my analytics and uh, most of my viewers aren't subscribed so make sure you hit that button and yeah I'll see you guys in the next tutorial thanks for watching all this origami all this origami all this origami got me going kamikaze now I'm